We hope you've enjoyed our show today. Your stories are finished and all put away. But we'll come again another day. The stories you've seen through Music and Mime can be written by you if you just take the time. So pick up a pencil and paper. You'll see. The, the adventures, adventures and magic, magic that writing sets free. So, right away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our show, call The Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499, and we'll send you some information. Now every day I write another story, poem or adventure tale. When I'm using my imagination, I know I will never fail. It's fun making up a superhero. Super Chipmunk saves the day. Here's a mystery to keep you guessing. I just love to write away. Let's have some fun. Now we begin. Just keep on writing cause it's so exciting right away. back at Right Away. We have received some wonderful stories written by students like you from all across the nation. Today is no exception. It's amazing how with just two simple objects, a pencil and paper, your creativity has taken us all over the world and introduced us to some very special people. Our first story is a great example of how you can use your imagination to meet someone special or travel to a place you've only ever imagined. Our first author is Angela DeBella. She's a second grader from Appalachie School in Tallahassee, Florida. Come with us as Angela takes us on an exciting sleigh ride. Hi everyone. Here we are at the North Pole, the home of Santa Claus himself. It's Christmas Eve and I'm here to help Santa with all the presents he has to deliver. Follow me. Bobby Jones from Minneapolis wants a football. Check. <laughs> Hi, Santa. Hi, Mrs. Claus. Well, Angela, what are you doing up here at the North Pole and on the night before Christmas? I thought you could use some help, so here I am. Oh, we're so glad you're here, Angela. The list of children that have been nice is extremely long this year. We could really use your help. Well, I'm ready. What shall we do first? <gasps> Let's make some hot cocoa. Oh, Santa always loves a cup of cocoa before he goes on one of his sleigh rides. Mmm, it smells great. Here's your cocoa, Santa. Well, thank you, Angela. Mmm, delicious. Well, what can I do now? Would you please feed the reindeer for us? Oh, I'd love to. Right that way. Oh. You know, Rudolph, your job is very important because you light the way so that Santa can see where all the houses are all over the world. Oh, very good. Thanks to you, Angela, I'm all ready to go. Santa, could I come with you and help you drive the sleigh? <laughs> Why, of course. Let's go. This was
was the best part of all. I got to help Santa deliver presents to all the good little boys and girls. We've got a long ride ahead of us, so we better say goodbye for now. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. The sleigh ride. The end. My favorite part of this job is reading all the scary stories that you've written for us. Ooh, you know, the kind that make your skin crawl and your spine tingle. Ugh. A good scary story has all the ingredients of suspense and mystery. And our next author has me holding on to my breath till the very, very end. Jennifer Wisdom, a third grader from Central Elementary in Duncanville, Texas, has her characters clean everything up in The Thing in the Gym. Yeah, my name is Peter, and I want to tell you a true story about the thing in the gym. Well, people say that it's a ghost that lives in the gym, but I never believe them. My story begins... I was in the gym playing basketball with my friend when my tooth got accidentally knocked out. Oh, man, sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's just my back tooth. Oh, there it is. Wow. Here. I'll just stick it up here, and I'll take it home later when I go home. Okay, come on, let's keep playing. After playing, I forgot about my tooth and went home. Oh, man, look at the time. I gotta go home. Yeah, me too. Let's go. The next day when I went back to get my tooth, it was gone. So I asked the janitor if he'd seen my tooth. Have you seen a tooth? A tooth, you say? No, I found a banana peel and some smelly gym socks and, and an autographed picture of Neil Sadaka. But no tooth. Ah, don't worry, son. Your tooth will grow back. Hey, maybe the thing in the gym took it. Or maybe it was a ghost. Oh, I don't believe in ghosts. Well, maybe and maybe not. I gotta go clean the showers later, dude. Well, while the janitor was cleaning out the showers, something very weird happened. Someone or something dropped a bottle of shampoo on the janitor's head. Something was definitely going on. So I decided to find out what it was and got my sister Carrie to help. So, do we have all our supplies? Yes. Stew for dinner, uh -huh. a camera, uh -huh. and a first aid kit in case one of us gets attacked by that thing in the gym. Okay, let's go. I don't see anything. Just some balloons and streamers for the dance tomorrow night. Let's go home. No, no. This is where all the mysterious accidents have occurred. In the gym and in the boys' shower room. Come on. Well, I'm not going in there. Pee you. Quiet. I think I hear something. Suddenly, we heard popping sounds, and that's when we saw it. I'll get it. You take a picture. Ah, take a picture. Ah. Okay. I got it. Ah. Let's go home. I got it. I got it. I got the film developed. Oh, good. Let me see it. Let me see it. It's, it's all furry. With big teeth and a mask on. It's... it's... It's a raccoon! You mean that terrifying thing in the gym? It was just a raccoon? That popping sound we heard was the raccoon popping the balloons from the dance. Yeah, and everyone knows raccoons like to steal things. He probably took your tooth and dumped the shampoo on the janitor's head. Hey, hey, let's call the zoo and get them to come capture the raccoon and take care of him. Good idea. The next day, the zookeeper met us at the gym. So, you say you have a wild beast for the zoo? No, it's not a wild beast. It's a raccoon. What? No man-eating, vicious, slobbering wild beast? No. Good. Come on. Let's go catch that raccoon. Here, little raccoon. Come here. Come here, little raccoon. It's got your tooth. 
me. It's got lots of people's teeth. Take up, take it, and I've got gotcha. you. All right, now I'm gonna take you to the zoo and give you a nice new home. Well, we gotta go. Bye, kids. Thanks. Once the zookeeper took the raccoon to the zoo, everything went back to normal. Until weird things started happening in the cafeteria. The end. Sometimes it's hard to know how to even start a story. Well, one way is to write about something or someone you know very well. Like, let's say, for example, your dog Fido. Ruff, ruff. Or your weird Aunt Bertha. Well, our next author gives us a peek at someone he knows very well. Garrett Benali, a fifth grader from Ojo Amarillo School in Fruitland, New Mexico, introduces us to his favorite person in My Mom. I was born in Shiprock, and when I was a baby, I saw my mom. I heard her laugh. <laughs> then we went home. Soon, I felt like a free baby. When I grew a little older, I wished I could have a dog. I think it was the best time of my life. And that's my mom. And Writing is fun because you can create anything you want. In just this past year, our young authors have created space aliens, monsters, time machines, and terrible villains. It's always enjoyable for us to see what your imaginations have conceived. I especially enjoy stories that give us a glimpse of a time long ago. Ashley Hudspeth, a student at Booker T. Washington School in Mesa, Arizona, lets us see what might happen if we were caught up in a time warp. Once there was a boy named Tom who always played baseball with his friends Bob and Joe. Okay, you play outfield, Tom, because you're not very good at batting. Yeah, like you're really good at catching. Okay, you guys. <laughs> Joe hit the ball out to left field and Tom yelled. I got it! I got it! Suddenly, everything went dark. When Tom woke up, he was no longer on the baseball field. He was in a medieval castle. I've got it. I've got it. I... Oh, oh, where am I? Oh, look at all these jewels. <laughs> oh, and all this delicious food. Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. I don't know where I am, but I better eat. <laughs> Tom ate and ate until suddenly the wind blew a window open and Tom looked outside to see a beautiful garden. This looks like my mom's garden, but something's different. I'm going to investigate. This isn't my mom's garden. This is the garden in a castle. I must be in a time warp. Tom walked into the beautiful garden and started to get homesick thinking about his mom. <laughs> I miss my parents and my home and my friends. How did I get here? I don't know how to get back. How did I travel back in time? What year is it? Suddenly, a knight on horseback appeared and Tom Whoa. asked him, What year is it? Why, it's 1522. And I bet you're wondering where you are. Who am I, and how did you get here? Sorry, can't tell you that. No, my lips are sealed. Mm-mm-mm, bomb's the word. But if you were to happen to hear voices that were familiar to you, like, let's say, Joe and Bob and your mum, well, and you happen to go in the direction of where the voices came from, uh-uh, well, then I suppose one might be able to find one's way home. But don't ask me, what do I know? I'm just a knight on a horse. Goodbye.
Joe, Mom, Bob, I'm coming, I'm coming. Tom! Mom, Bob, Joe, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, Tom, wake, wake, wake up. up! I'm back. Bob, Joe, you don't believe what happened to me. I was in a time warp, and I went to a castle, and there was a lot of delicious food there, and some nice jewels, and, and a strange man on a horse who helped me, I think. Tom, like, you got hit on the head with a ball? Yeah, it was just a dream. But it was real. Yeah, right. Quick, go foot around, Tom. Let's play ball. Yeah. Come on, let's play ball. But this time, I bet. And so, Tom never told anyone else about his adventure in the Time Warp again. Roses are red, violets don't stink, but if they are dirty, hose them down. No, that doesn't work. I know what will help. When writing, use the resources available to you. Encyclopedias, dictionaries, a rhyming dictionary like this. Got it. Roses are red, violets don't stink, but if they are dirty, wash them in the sink. <laughs> Good. You see, when you use tools like this, they're a valuable resource that helps you put what's in your mind down on paper. And whether or not our next writer used one of these, he has come up with a very amusing poem in the form of a limerick. It was written by Rogelio Ortega, a fifth grader at Martin Luther King School in San Diego, California. And he writes about a young man from Chile. There was a young man from Chile who had a new girlfriend named Millie. They wanted to dance and took time out to France. But they were showing off and being silly. The young man from Chile. story often involves a problem that needs to be resolved. For example, if you take your character and put him up in a tree, then you have to get him back down. Remember, a problem for your character doesn't have to seem important to you, only to him or her. Courtney Morris is from Corpus Christi, Texas. She's a first grader at Annaville Elementary. Courtney tells us about her problem and how she solved it in her story entitled, The Apple. Once, our teacher got a red apple. Oh, thank you so much. It's so shiny and red. Hi there, teacher. You're looking pretty today. Oh, what a sweet apple. Oh, I'm not going to eat you. I'm going to leave you here on my desk so I can look at you all the time. I love you, you sweet little apple. Teacher. What? Can't you see I'm talking to my apple? It's time to go home. Oh, yes. Good night, everybody. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, my sweet little apple. Good night. That night, a worm got into our classroom. Let's see what's on this desk. Oh, there's books, pencil, an eraser, and an apple. An apple? Oh, no. Come here, you big, juicy apple. <laughs> this is delicious. <laughs> the next day, our teacher noticed the apple was gone. Good morning, students. Now, everyone open up your books to page. <gasps> My apple is gone. I think a worm ate it. There's the core. Oh, my poor, sweet little apple. You're gone. What am I going to do without you? Our teacher cried all day long. She cried so much, the classroom filled up with water. The whole school could drown. Oh, what should we do? Oh, I know. I've got another apple here in my lunch sack. I'll give it to her, and maybe she'll stop crying. I gave her the apple just in time. Thank you so much. Oh, it looks.
looks just like my other sweet little apple. Hi there, teacher. I'm so happy. No more schoolwork today. Let's party! So we all partied until we went home. And we were all happy. Oh, good night, everybody. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night, my sweet little apple. I'll see you tomorrow, too. Good night. Oh, Joe, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to do this next story. It's going to be so much fun. Fun. <laughs> it's great when a writer can make the reader have just as much fun as they had in the story. In fact, writing is all about sharing feelings and experiences. The next experience our author shares with us is plain. Christy Chitwood, a second grader from J.J. Izzard Elementary in Van Buren, Arkansas, tires us out in her story, I Can't Wait to Play. I can't wait to play because I'm going to have fun. First, I'm going to play with my friends. You're it. No, you're it. No, you're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. Stand up. I'm going to play with my cousin. Come on, hopscotch. My turn. Go faster, faster, faster. Then I'm going to play with my cat. Then I'm going to go play with my Okay, go fetch. Quick, quick. Fetch. Fetch. <laughs> then I'll play with my friend again. You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. Then I'll feed my fish. Here, fishy, fishy. Do you want some more? Take it off. Then I'll play with my Barbie. Oh, Barbie, you've been such a good girl. I'm going to brush your hair, and then you're going on a date with Ken. Then I'll play with my cat and my dog. Here! Go fetch! Go fetch! Hey! Where is everybody? Oh, well, I can't wait till recess because I'm going to play again and I'm going to have fun! Even in the strangest situations, lessons can be learned. We're all familiar with Aesop's fables, where we're taught lessons through stories written about animals. But this next story is not about a cute little rabbit or a cuddly little squirrel. It's about two boys in peril. And the lesson they learn is hammered home in a way that will keep you on the edge of your seats. Woo Vanessa Mesa, a third grader from Helen Ball Elementary in El Paso, Texas, teaches us a very valuable lesson in her horrific story entitled The Sea Monster from Elephant Butte. Submitted for your approval, the date March 7th, 1993. The place, a cold, foggy lake called Elephant Butte. Two kids on an innocent fishing trip are about to have the adventure of their lives in the Scary Zone. Picture this. Two kids, Jerry and Jason, fishing in the middle of Elephant Butte. Their mother was on the shore making supper. Jason, the oldest boy, was also known as a big brat. He was always teasing his younger brother, Jerry. Oh, Jerry, what's that coming over here? It's coming right towards you. It's a shark! Got <laughs> <laughs> you. Knock it off, Jason. Finally, Jerry snagged a fish. Oh, 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 I got one. It must be a big one, because I can hardly reel it in. Oh, it's too bad. Are you a big wimp? <laughs> no, really. I can't do it myself. Oh, let me help you. It was getting harder and harder to reel it in. The boys were getting scared. <laughs> Jason, it's been an hour and my hand hurts. <laughs> Jerry, I don't think this is any ordinary fish. <laughs> Jerry? Jerry? Are you okay? Jerry, answer me! 
Oh no, Mom's gonna be really mad when she finds out about this. Jerry! Suddenly the boat was bumped. Jason became very scared. Then he saw it. Scales skimming the top of the water. Jason's boat was being pushed toward a waterfall. Oh no, I'd be pushed over a waterfall. I better hold on! Jason swam to shore, found his mother. Mom, Mom, a big sea monster pulled Jerry into the water, and then it pushed my boat over the waterfall. Jason, were you teasing your brother again? Uh, now, where is he? I don't know, Mom, really. We have to find Jerry. Come on, we'll find out the truth. It is the truth, Mom. Jerry! 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 There he is, Mom. Oh, oh, son, speak to me. Wake up, Jerry, wake up. Uh, Jason, Mom. <laughs> what happened to me? I got bot marks all over me. Oh. You were bitten by a sea monster, remember? Jason, there's no such thing as sea monsters. Maybe it was a dog or a hungry little fish. Come on, let's get you to the doctor. So, you say you were fishing? Yeah, and he was bit by a big sea monster, right, Jerry? I don't remember. Oh, these are pretty big bites. The mammal that did this would have to have pretty big teeth. Are you sure your brother didn't bite you? I didn't bite him. I didn't bite him. Why would anyone believe me? Yeah. Don't worry. You'll be better in no time. Soon Jerry was back to his old self, but he never remembered what happened. Now, let's try to sit down and have a normal dinner like a normal family, and keep your teeth to yourself. <laughs> but it did happen. You remember, don't you, Jerry? You were bit by a big sea monster, remember, remember? No. What's for dinner? <laughs> Fish! Oh. <laughs> this reminds me of someone. <laughs> they never went fishing Elephant Butte again after the attack. And as for Jason, he was never a brat to Jerry again. Because he had entered the scary zone. time again. Time to say goodbye until we see you next month. Let's see. We've seen action with a vulture and a whole movie of a birthday party. <laughs> uh -huh. Zombies and butterflies and kids who eat homework. Johnny Appleseed and Pecos Bill and strange bats in strange places. And you've seen all this because you've used your imagination to bring it all to life. So who knows what you could come up with next? The possibilities are endless. Keep writing about anyone and anything that comes to your minds and send it to us. Come on, do it now. And we'll keep looking for those great stories. Until then, right away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our show, call The Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 and we'll send you some information. Now every day I write another story Poem or adventure tale When I'm using my imagination I know I will never fail It's fun making up a superhero Super Chipmunk saves the day Here's a mystery to keep you guessing I just love to write away Let's have some fun, now we've begun just keep on writing cause it's so exciting Right away Right away Right away Right away Pick up a paper and pen Right away Right away Don't know just how to begin Right away Right away Just let the ideas flow Right away Right away Don't worry about where they'll go Right away Right away Let's have some fun Now we began Just keep on riding Cause it's an exciting Right away Let's have some fun, now we've begun 
Just keep on riding cause it's so exciting Right away Right away Right away Fly away little bird Be free Brian just let a wild sparrow that he found go. It was sick and he nursed it back to health. But it was wild and it needed to be free. Brian, you made the right decision. That little sparrow needed to be back in its home out in nature. I know, but I'll miss it. Oh, well, maybe I can cheer you up with this wonderful story about a caged animal that needed to be free. And I bet by the end of the story, you'll know you made the right decision. This story comes to us from Anthony Chaperone, a first grader from Midland School. Come with us as we meet the vulture in the cage. Once upon a time, there were two vulture friends who loved to fly high up in the sky. Rock! Oh, Vivian, there's nothing like being free to soar high in the sky. Whoa, I love it. It's so much fun. Woo! And to swoop down and to eat some dead meat and to fly back in the wild blue yonder. I feel free. I feel a song coming on. Fly free. <laughs> What's that strange robot doing over there? He's got a cannon and a net pointed at us. Fly away, Victor. Fly away. <laughs> Vivian Vulture got away, but poor Victor was captured by the net and taken to a strange laboratory by a crazed robot. Now the thigh bone's connected to the leg bone. The leg bone is connected to the... Ah! Uh, I need to get more parts for my bird. Ah, Mr. Robot, why did you put me in this cage? I'm a wild bird! I was meant to be free! Free! Ah, stop that singing! I need you to be my model. I'm going to make a robot vulture so strong and powerful that it will take over the entire world. But now I need to get more feathers. You stay in this cage until I return or else. Oh, I wish my friend Vivian were here to help me. What am I going to do? Suddenly, Victor's friend Vivian appeared at the window. Vivian, it's you. Get me out of this cage. Get rid of him before he takes over the world! Ah! Don't worry, Victor! I'll get you out! But Vivian was too big to get through the bars. All right. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that last dead elk! <sighs> I know! I'll pick the lock with my beak! So Vivian Vulture picked the lock, and Victor was free. Yay! Yeah, you saved me! You saved me! But just then, the robot was coming back. Bye. The robot entered the laboratory and became very angry. Where is my vulture gone? I'm right here, you big piece of shit! Vivian pushed the robot into the cage, and Victor locked the door. Yeah, see how you like being locked up! <laughs> Please let me go. I'm sorry. If you let me go, I promise never to use wild animals for robots to take over the world again and I'll never use a cage to keep in those wild animals and I'll only make toys for children to play with I promise yeah. Oh, let him go All right Oh, thank you, thank you Be free, be free <laughs> And so the vultures were free to fly high up into the sky where they really belong. And they lived happily ever after. For my next character, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy, that's it. Happy, happy, No, 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 I'll be sad. I'll be so sad. No, 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 no. no. I'll be in love. That's it. I'll be in love. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you too. I love you. Where are you? I'm over here. I love you. I love No, no, no. I'll be crazy. That's it. <laughs> Poor Paul. He's trying to find out which mood or feeling his next character will have. Let's see if we can help. Follow me right this way. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Having trouble? 
Yeah, I can't figure out what emotion to use to make my next character come to life. Well, Paul, you don't have to worry about your character for this next story. Because he's a well-known one. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, everyone has heard of Johnny Appleseed. He's part of our American folklore. What's really unique about this story, and about writing in general, is taking a character that is already developed and putting your own special twist. That's what two authors from Elps Road School have done. Kindergartner Jared Cole and fourth grader Matthew Barkaloo have gotten this interesting character and put a new twist in their tall tale, My Friend Johnny Appleseed. This is the real story of a very unusual boy named Johnny Appleseed. Now, you may think my tale is tall, but once you hear it, you'll know it's true. Johnny was a boy like any other boy, except for one thing. He loved apples. Oh, Mom, I just love apples. And I love the smell of apple blossoms. And I love to pick them off the trees and throw them up in the air and count them all before I go to bed at night. And, Mom, I even have dreams about apples dancing around my head. That's nice, Johnny boy. One day, as he danced around the apple orchard, he came up with an idea and ran to tell his mother. Mom! Mom! I want to live some. I want the whole world to love apples the way that I do. I'm going to travel the countryside, and I'm going to take seeds, and I'm going to plant them so the trees will grow, and everybody will have as many apples as they want. Oh, that's nice, Johnny boy. So off Johnny went, with apple seeds, no coat, no shoes, and only a pot to cook with. He didn't want to carry the pot, so he wore it on his head like a hat. <laughs> a strange hat indeed. On he went, planting seeds, until he met up with an angry farmer. Hey there! You with the pot on your head, what you doing on my property? I'm planting apple seeds so that you can have apples. I don't like apples. I don't like men with pots on their heads either. You have no right planting on my property. For your punishment, I'm putting you on a train and sending you to the Wild West. Sounds great. And so poor Johnny headed west. When he got there, he met the one, the only, Pecos Bill. Hey there, what do you have a pot in your head for? It keeps the sun and the rain off my head. Plus it's really good to make applesauce with. That's mighty neat. Hey, can I have a pot for my head too? Well, sure you can. And I'll even give you some apple seeds. Ah. My name's Johnny Appleseed. Please meet you, Johnny Pecos Bill, the name. <gasps> Pecos Bill? Hey, you're the Pecos Bill that, that, that tames snakes and lassos them to catch tornadoes? That's me. Wow, I'd be honored if you wore my pot. Thanks, Johnny. I'll pay you back real soon. And boy, did he. As Johnny was swimming in the Colorado River, a big hungry fish started to chase Johnny. Help! Somebody help me! Ten miles away, Pecos Bill heard screaming. Sounds like my good friend Johnny Apples, he's in trouble. I'd better go help him. Pecos Bill pulled Johnny out just in time. Thanks, Pecos Bill. You saved my life. No problem. Now we're friends to the end. To the end. Hey, Apple, I don't mind if I do. And that's the tall tale of Johnny Appleseed. Oh. That's great. Oh. That's neat. That's oh, oh, hi. hi. Hey, we're watching a video from last year when we were at a picnic. Oh, Sabrina, you won the race. Yeah. Oh, Sabrina, yeah. that's great. You know, it's nice to look at snapshots of your family or friends, but it's really exciting to watch a, an action video because you never know what's going to happen. What's also exciting is when an author can take a personal experience and write it so the reader feels right in the action. <laughs> Just like second grader Desiree Fuller from Conti School in her story entitled The Baby's Birthday Party. <laughs> it's me! It's me! Look! Well, here we are at our baby's first birthday. <laughs> See, there's Junior in the chair. That's right, say hi, Junior. 
and there's mommy <laughs> and your big brother <laughs> smile <laughs> and grandma <laughs> wake up grandma grandma say hi <laughs> that's nice <laughs> honey get the cake now okay <laughs> this is <so> fun <laughs> oh look at that cake all right light the candle oh that's great that's great oh i love it okay blow out the candle Go out the candle. Uh, oh, oh, who did that? <laughs> okay, now get a piece of cake. Uh -huh. The cake is in the hand. <laughs> yeah, oh, the cake is all over the face. <laughs> oh, golly. Cake is in his ear. <laughs> oh, the cake on oh, mommy's nose. <laughs> oh, the cake's all over grandmother's glasses. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, look, look, the cake is under the table. <laughs> Say hi, son. Say hi. <laughs> oh, this is great. Baby's first birthday. The end. Wave everybody to the camera. Wave. <laughs> it was great. I love to read stories about dreams that come true. Some of them are romantic dreams about love, and some are adventure dreams about being a hero. But what if it's a strange dream that never ends? I bet if you tell me what your dream is about, I can tell you what it meant. Well, I dreamt I was on this boat going on a long voyage, but the waves got bigger and bigger, and so I couldn't reach the shore. What does that mean? Never take a boat. Always use a surfboard. Easy. Well, I always have the same dream of a prince that comes to my door. He rings a doorbell. I run to answer it, but every time I open it, he's gone. What does that mean? Never open the door without first applying lip gloss. See? Figuring out dreams can be easy, but sometimes they can be strange. The great thing is that you, as an author, have complete control over how you want it to end. That's what our next author did, Christian Hanneberg, a third grader from Henry Elementary, in her story, The Weird Dream. Once there lived a very happy little flying fruit bat named C.H. He and his family lived in a cave, and they just loved fruit, especially oranges. C.H., would you please go and fly and get us more oranges? We're all out. Yes, Mother. It's boring just hanging around here. See you soon. Sure to watch where you're going, son. Okay, Dad. Bye. So, C.H. began to fly in search of oranges. He saw an orange grove and was heading for an orange when he hit a tree and got knocked out. The wind was so strong, it picked C.H. up and blew him far away. Oh, oh no. Where am I? It's hot. Last thing I remember was going toward an orange tree. And... Oh no! I'm lost! Help! Poor little C.H. was in a strange land with no friends or family. He just sat in a tree and cried. Suddenly, a funny looking man came walking by and saw little C.H. in the tree. I say, I say, what's this? Why, why, it's a fruit bat. Why? I'd say you've lost your way. Come, come, no more tears. What is your name? C.H. I was going to get some fruit from an orange tree, and then that's the last thing I remembered. Like some sort of weird dream. Here I am. Can you help me? Yes, my nocturnal friend. I know exactly how to get you back home. You do? Yes. I've studied animals all my life. Yes, I have. See, you are a fruit bat. Uh -huh. Yes, and you have a keen sense of sight and smell. Why, I'm just going to put you in a big slingshot and catapult you back where you belong. Uh, will it hurt? I don't know. I've never done it before. Hmm. Well, okay, let's go. All right, follow me. So, the interesting man put C.H. into a giant slingshot, let it go, and off C.H. went flying through the sky. He flew so fast that he fell asleep. And when he woke up... Wake up, son! Wake up, C.H. Go oh. home, son. Mom, Dad, you'll never believe what happened. I flew all the way to Africa, and then I hit my head, and some guy put me in a slingshot and flew me all the way back home. Was it a dream? 
It was no dream, son. It was real. We're just glad you're back here safe and sound. Me too. And from that day on, C.H. always looked where he was going when he flew high up in the sky. Oh, hi. I'm running down all the excuses in the world why homework never gets done. And then I'll be in the Guinness Book of World Records on excuses. And they'll have no excuse not to put me in. I have found some great excuses, like... My next door neighbor is really an alien, and I had to take infrared pictures of her spaceship that she keeps in a big, huge Tupperware bowl, so I couldn't finish my homework. Yeah, it's a good one. But then, there are really some lame excuses like, my dog ate it. Ha! <laughs> Get real. If you want to hear a really, really good excuse, one of the best ones I found came from Ben Powell, a fifth grader from Kaiser Elementary. He has the best excuse in the world in... My sister ate my homework. Gotta write it down. My sister Jenny, she's a living monster that eats homework. Even if you tell her to stop, she doesn't listen and just chomps away at full speed. Jenny, stop! No! <laughs> oh, she's homework thirsty. She's eating my math sheets with the side order of my social science paper. Mom, help! One time, my mom locked her in her room. Jenny, you have to stay in your room so that you won't eat your brother's homework. Now go to sleep. Homework. Must have homework. When I woke up, there was my sister with toast, and homework. Jenny, you're eating my homework again. Aw, <coughs> what am I gonna tell my teacher? And where is your homework, young man? I, I bumped my head, uh, and that's why I don't have my homework done. Where did you bump your head? Oh, I wish just once I could turn my homework in. <laughs> hey, heard your lame excuse about your homework. Boy, you're in trouble. <laughs> I got it. I'll send Jenny to Brad's house. And she can eat his homework. Oh, Jenny! Yeah? Brad's got lots of homework at his house. Decimal sheets and math salad. And he lives right over there. <laughs> oh, boy! This was the first time I ever turned in my homework. But when I got home, Casey, oh, you're eating my shoes. Mom, we have a new problem. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have this wish I wish tonight. <laughs> we all make wishes on stars when we blow out our birthday candles when we rub magic lamps. Some authors have wishes come true for their characters, and some authors use those wishes to teach us that we should be careful about what we wish for. You'll see exactly what I mean in this next story by seventh grader Albert Ortiz of Conti School, as we meet a man named Raja. This is the story of a man named Raja. He had no money, and was not liked by anyone. Good morning, Raja. How are you? What do you care? You have money, and I have none. How rude. Yes, Raja was rude, because he envied everyone around him. One day, Raja walked down a narrow, fruitful path, where he encountered a butterfly who looked so unhappy. 
Yes, what can I do for you? You speak. Well, why have you come? I'm sorry, I, I do not know you. I'm a stranger to this enchanted place. All I do know is that no one loves me or likes me. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Tell me another. <laughs> I'm trying to be honest with you, but you are being rude. I, sir, am a butterfly with magic powers. And because you have nothing, I will grant you three wishes. But remember, seek wisely for what you wish for. Three wishes? All right. I wish for all the money in the world. Are you sure? Oh, yes. So be it. <coughs> Go home and speak to no one. Hello, neighbor. How rude. The next morning, Raja awoke filthy rich with Hi. friends. Let's party! But Raja soon tired of all the parties and wealth. Go home. The party's over! How rude! He went back to the butterfly. Butterfly, I am not happy with my wish. Take it back. Oh no, you cannot give it back. But you can wish it away. All right. I wish I was poor again. Now go home. Speak to no one. Oh, you do have one more wish. Would you like to use it? No. What did you say? I said no. Aha! Uh -huh. You spoke when I said speak to no one. Now you will become a butterfly like me. Raja had indeed turned into a butterfly. But as he flew, an eagle suddenly appeared and swallowed him up. His wishes had not brought him any happiness. And that is the story of a man named Raja. And now, welcome to another spine-tingling Tales from the Script. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my little ghoul and ghoulettes, and welcome to another horrifically good tale of madness and mayhem. Tonight's tale deals with a devilish dare between friends. Will they survive Halloween? Let's see. <laughs> As in this story by Alison Heller, I dare you not to cover your eyes in her story called Why People Don't Go to the Cemetery at Night. <laughs> It was Halloween night, and four friends, Dana, David, Mike, and Carrie, were putting the finishing touches on their costumes. Well, how do I look? Like a dead cheerleader, baby. Oh, good! Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> hey, you make a cool-looking clown, David. Thanks. And Carrie, you are a most excellent bride. Thanks. Hey, what about me? Oh, well, you're a totally cool Elvis. Thank you, Thank you very much. You're the king. Hi, hey, everybody ready? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go. Okay. And so the four 14-year-olds left and went to the first house. It looked dark, but they rang the doorbell, and an old man answered the door. Sugar tea, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. <laughs> You're a great kid. Here's lots of candy for you. Oh boy. Yeah, there's two for you. Wow, oh, you look creepy. What a great costume. It's not a costume, get it, kid. Ow! And it's just... And so the four fun-filled teenagers kept gathering up candy until they came to the edge of the cemetery. <laughs> hey, it's almost midnight. Hey, Dana, I dare you to lay down on one of the graves. 
any grade. Ew, do I have to? Chicken! Oh, all right, I will, but you guys have to come with me. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. The foolish teenagers entered the graveyard and tiptoed past the graves until Dana saw one tombstone and laid down on the ground. But suddenly, a hand came up through the ground and grabbed her. <laughs> Dana looked straight into the face of a zombie. She jumped up, but she was surrounded. She screamed for help. Help! Like, don't worry, I'll help you. The four teenagers ran out of the cemetery and then looked back. Look, the zombie can't get past the cemetery walls. He's going back to his grave. We're safe. Come on, let's go home. I don't think anyone will ever believe us. Like, we can never tell anyone. I don't think we'll ever recover. Do you think it was real? They would often think and wonder if it was real, but Carrie never got her high heel back. Dana's pom-pom was lost forever. And David and Mike kept having the same bad dream. <laughs> and that, my friends, is why people are afraid to go to the cemetery at night. <laughs> now, wasn't that a hair-raising tale of terror? <laughs> I know I'll think twice before I dare anyone to do something as fun as romp through a cemetery uninvited. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye for now, and I dare you not to keep in touch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my pet hamster Melvin is ready to race in this new race car invented just for hamsters. Yeah, well, my guinea pig go-kart is spectacular and ready for action. But oh, hi, we have no time to chat. We have a race to start. Oh, we have a minute. As inventors, we like to invent things that are useful for mankind. Inventions that help, not hurt. And as writers, you are inventors. By using your imagination, you can create stories that help us learn more about ourselves and others. And we'd like to honor you inventive minds out there with a story about a man who invented the ultimate machine. Comes to us from fourth grader Jared Bowles from Freiburger Elementary. Now we introduce you to the invention. Ready, set, go! Once upon a time, there was an inventor named John, who was a terrific inventor. He was getting interviewed on a show to explain his new invention. Tell us, Professor John. <laughs> May I call you that? Oh, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Anything you like. <laughs> oh. Tell us a little bit about uh, your inventions and how they work. I'd love to. All right, this is a light bulb. I invented this to bring light into the world. <laughs> you just put it in the socket and voila, light. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, what's that right there? Oh, oh, this? Wow, this is an ordinary pencil. Yeah, I was in a writing mood when I invented this. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> now tell us a little bit about your new invention. Oh, I'd love to. Oh. This is called Live Again. It'll take anything that's sick and make it healthy. For instance, take this very sick looking flower. Yes. All right, I put it in here, and I pull the lever, and look, oh, it's well again. Oh, that's amazing. I know. Oh, good <laughs> luck, good luck. And please, stay tuned with us tomorrow when we have a man on the show who says he knows the reason why hot dogs explode in the microwave. So see you tomorrow. Bye. And so, John went home excited. There he found his son, Junior, working hard.
Will you stop working? <laughs> hey, did you see me on TV? Yes, Dad. I looked pretty good, didn't I? Yes, Dad. <laughs> I want to celebrate. Let's go up to the mountains in the snow and have some fun. Okay, Dan. Come on. Right, Junior, with this invention, why, we can heal everybody who's sick and make everybody happy. And I helped. Yes, you did, Junior. Why, you're the best assistant and the best son an inventor could want to have. Not to mention the best guinea pig. <laughs> All my inventions are a success because... I, I helped. <laughs> That's right, Junior. Oh, here we are. Let's go out in the snow and have some fun. But just as the professor and his son were about to build a snowman, they heard a noise. Oh, what's that sound, Junior? I'll go see. Don't talk to strangers. It was a bear. Ah! A bear that was a little too friendly. Ah, shoo! Get away, bear! Get out of here! Oh, son, son, are you all right? Uh... I'll take you back to the car and take you home. Oh, this is the perfect time to see if my invention really works. Come on, get on my back. Let's go. Son, you'll have to sit up if you want your dad to be able to drive right. And I help. I guess, son, you did. Oh, oh, we're here. John had to hurry and put Junior in the machine. He turned on the lever. And suddenly, Junior jumped out as good as new. Oh, it works. It really works. Now people can use this machine to make everybody well. And I helped. Yes, you did, Junior. And they lived happily ever after. Well, gang, we made it. Another great edition of the Right Away Gazette put to bed. And you all did a great job. But the real thanks goes to all those writers out there who are sending stories to us. And Joe, I'll never make fun of you when you come up with a harebrained story about surfing veggies. Well, not too much fun. <laughs> well, what are you all waiting around for? We've got more work to do, our next edition to put out. Get out there and find those stories. And what's our motto? Right Away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our show, call The Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499, and we'll send you some information. Now every day I write another story, poem or adventure tale. When I'm using my imagination, I know I will never fail. It's fun making up a superhero. Super Chipmunk saves the day. Here's a mystery to keep you guessing. I just love to write away. Let's have some fun. Now we begun. Just keep on writing, cause it's so exciting right away. about it. Oregon Boy says they laughed when I wanted to play. Third grader Jack Lee from Eugene, Oregon tells us all about it in his story, The Boy Left Out. This is the story of a kid named John. John was an unhappy boy because he always got left out of team sports at school. All right, everybody, we're here now. 
we can choose up sides to play a little tag football. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oscar, 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 can anybody play? Uh, we'll see. You pick first. I pick Jim. <laughs> okay, I pick, uh, Sally. Yeah. Well, that takes care of everyone who really can play football. Oh, here, John. Here. Here's some money. You go and buy us some sodas. Yeah, and if you're really lucky, maybe we'll let you cheerlead for us. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's go. They may be laughing at me now, but someday, as Joe Montana is my witness, I will play football. John never got picked to play sports, but he didn't give up. Then one day, John's big chance came. Jim was hurt, and the team was one man short. Well, Jim's out. <laughs> Looks like you'll have to forfeit because you don't have another player. <laughs> Let me play, please. Look, look, me, me, me. Hello. Hello, me, please. Me, please, me, please, me, please. <laughs> oh. I guess I'll have to take John. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, John, you better be good or else. Don't worry, just pass me that pigskin. <laughs> yeah. From now on, I'm always putting you on my team. No way! My team! No, my team! Yeah. My team! <laughs> yes, John could play football. But one day, the game changed to baseball. And with that, went John's luck. Strike three! You're up! Boy, John, you really stink at this game. I think you should stick to football. You're right, I will stick to football. And I'm gonna practice every day. I'm gonna lift weights. I'm gonna eat right. And I'm not gonna go out with girls on school nights. Sorry. And I'm gonna get really good grades because when I grow up, I'm gonna be in the NFL. And now John does play in the NFL as a wide receiver. Oh, if I had nine more like him, I can rule the world. Yay, John! I learned a valuable lesson. If you have a dream, never ever give up. Just keep on trying. Extra, extra, new poet discovered in New Jersey. Fifth grader Samir Hussein shares a poem based on his name in Name Poem. Smart in sports and smart in school. Oh, so cool. Well, maybe sometimes I'm a fool. Well, hockey, I can play. Understand what people say. Go get them. Sneaky, I am not. Yeah. Sometimes people like me a lot. Aiming for a good life, I am always nice. Ow! Oh, ow. Ooh. Ooh. And never will I play with a knife. Name poem, the end. Read all about it. Pirate saves beautiful princess. Take a trip with kindergartner Carly Moore and fourth grader Abby Mathis from Alps Road School in Athens, Georgia, as they go on a treasure hunt. Once long ago, there lived a pirate, a mean pirate who hated all around him. He only loved one thing, his pet parrot. Oh, me beautiful bird, why won't you eat? I haven't spoken for two days. You're the only thing I love in this whole world. That is, except for me treasure. Now on this ship, there were also two very good pirates who took care of the mean pirate. Hey, I'm all done swabbing the deck. And if I say so myself, this deck is so shiny, I can almost see myself in it. Hey. Aye, and I'm done peeling these potatoes for the wonderful shepherd's pie I'm baking for dinner. Hey. 
But I'm worried about the captain. He keeps trying to feed his parrot. Hey, maybe one of us should break the news to him that we think Polly left this world a week ago. Nah. They sailed on and on until one day when the mean pirate came up with a plan. Arr, I've got to hide me treasure so that no one will find it. And then I'll claim it later. What's this I see? Why, it's an island. Well, get me treasure, and we'll bury it on that island. Let's get in the rowboat. Let's go. The mean pirate was gone, and soon the good pirates realized this. You know, it seems awfully quiet around here. Hey, I wonder where's the captain? I don't... Look, there he goes on that island to bury the treasure. The treasure that we helped him get. Ah, uh, how rude. Let's swim to the island, find the treasure, and take what rightfully belongs to us. But we'll let him keep the parrot. The mean pirate took the treasure and went to hide it. Meanwhile, the two nice pirates were in pursuit. Ah, I see him. He went through the bushes, up the mountain, swam through the lake, and he's now burying the treasure on the other side of the island. Arr, you have excellent eyesight. Why, thank you. Uh, let's go. The mean pirate was about to bury his treasure when he heard a female voice cry out. Help! Help! I am the princess of this island, and I've been trapped on this hill for so long. Won't you help me down? No, I don't have time to help you. I've got to hide me treasure. Don't worry, Polly. She means nothing to me. You're the only one I've ever loved. Now, we'll bury this treasure and we'll be done with it. Help! Help! I am the princess of this island and I've been stranded on this hill for so long. Uh, don't worry, Lassie. We'll help you. Here, let me help you down. Thank you. You're both so brave and kind. How can I reward you? Have you seen a mean pirate here with a treasure? <gasps> and a parrot that looks like it's sleeping on his shoulder that he talks to? <sighs> Why, yes! He went that way. Let me show you. But just as the three were about to leave, the earth shook and rocks came falling down on them and buried them. The mean pirate must have made this avalanche to try to stop us. Hey, but he failed. When he started the avalanche, the treasure must have fallen out of his hands because here it is. Ah, but where's the princess? The mean pirate had pulled the princess out of the rubble and kidnapped her. Well, they'll be back to try to save you, but I'll stop them and I'll get me treasure back. And now to take a nap. The good pirates freed the princess and escaped. Oh, don't leave me here. Take me with you. Take me with you. Oh, thank you. And when the mean pirate woke up, he was mad. Arr, me princess is gone. And, and me Polly is gone too. And me treasure. Oh, that's what I get for being so stingy. And so the two good pirates sailed on to new adventures with the beautiful princess and Polly, who had been sleeping the whole time. And as for the mean pirate, he's still on that island trying to find a way off. But at least he has a new pet. Don't clam up on me. Speak to me. I'm so lonely. <laughs> Don't miss this late edition. President visits local school. Fifth grader Sarah Milton from Boise, Idaho, tells us all about the day President Clinton came to our school. Today is a very special day because Mr. President Clinton is coming to our school. That's right. The president is coming to our school because we won a special award. Yeah, we 
were judged the most improved school in reading in the entire United States. We had our pictures in the paper and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there he is! Oh, let's go, let's go! They're all going into the auditorium to meet him. Let's go! is about to begin his speech. I'm so excited! My fellow citizens and future voters of America, I am so proud of you all. You have accomplished what all schools must strive to do. Be better readers, because better readers make better citizens. And as I look out on all your young faces, I have to admit that I am worried about the 1996 campaign. And with your permission, while I plan to use this school in my campaign to show the American people how great our educational system is. And now, I hear that there are some students who want to read for us. <clears throat> America, a poem by me and the resource class. America, oh America, land of the Brie. I mean free. <laughs> Brie's a <of> cheese. <laughs> How proudly your flag flies up in the smog-filled skies. We always will be through, I mean true, to the red, the white, and the pew. The, I mean blue. Well, now, that was special, now, wasn't that? All right, now, I brought some books from the Library of Congress, and I'm going to need a volunteer to read this. One brave sixth grade boy has volunteered, but he looks scared. <laughs> Come on, son. Come up here and show me what a wonderful reader you are. Excited that President Clinton is here. And I know that that's causing a little bit of anxiety. So I want everyone in the auditorium to take three deep breaths. Everyone? Oh. Oh. One more? Oh. All right. Now let's continue. Take it away. Now, don't worry. I've been nervous many times before. And now, I need someone to come up here and read from my campaign material. I will! I will! I will! Oh. It was very difficult material, but I read it without one mistake. Now is the time for everyone to get out there and vote and let your voices be heard. You must take action and make this world a better place to live. Bravo! Bravo! <laughs> now I bet the whole world knows that we're the best school in the whole United States. Read all about it. Read all about it. Duo rewrites classic. Lewis Carroll tale is updated by Jasmine Kahn, a kindergartner, and Hugh Kennedy, a fourth grader, from Alps Road School in Athens, Georgia. Their new story is called Alice in Halloween Land. Once upon a time, a little girl named Alice was sitting under a tree listening to her mother read a very boring story. Suddenly, she saw a big frog jumping in the grass, and Alice, being a curious girl, chased it into the forest. Alice found herself deep in the forest. Where am I? And where'd that frog go? There he is! Alice went to grab the frog, but tripped over a root and hit her head. 
<laughs> Ow! That hurt! Suddenly, Alice began to see strange visions. A pumpkin with a face. A vampire and a scary cat laughing at her. I must get away! I must get away! Alice saw a door in a tree and went into the door. Oh my, it's spooky here. I should have stayed with my mother. <gasps> Look, an exit. I'll go that way. Alice found herself surrounded by living crayons. Wow! <gasps> Living crayons! Can you really color pictures? What a rude little girl, asking so many questions. Of course we can color. We can turn the sky from blue to black and make little girls like you have spots on their hands. Oh, no, you can't. Oh, no, you take these spots back. No, now we're going to turn you to curious green, just like that frog. <laughs> There's that frog. I'm going to follow him, and maybe I can find my way back home. And so Alice followed the frog through the forest, through the door, and when she got up... And so that's the story of the curious girl. Now, wasn't that an exciting story? Not nearly as exciting as what happened to me. I chased a frog and fell down a hole, and then I hit my head. And then I saw a laughing pumpkin. Ho, ho, ho. And then these mean, nasty crayons. They painted spots all over my hands. And look, they're still there. Well, they were there. Oh, ho, 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 Alice, you have such a wild imagination. <laughs> Extra, extra, get your late breaking news. Tucson boy hears whales speak. Second grader William Burke from Anna Henry Elementary in Tucson, Arizona, relates his experiences in A Whale Speaks. I am a whale, and I eat krill for food. After I dive deep down into the ocean, I come up to the surface of the water and blow out of my blowhole. Hi, fish friends. Hi. Hi, Mr. Starfish. Hi. I want to make one thing clear. I am not a fish. He's not a fish. He's not a fish. I am a mammal. He's a mammal. He's a big mammal because he beats air. And I live in the ocean, swimming with side fins that help me steer. And when I'm hungry, I make a clicking noise to find food. We like that. And I like being who I am, a whale. A whale speaks. The end. Get your hot news right here. Fourth grader's Olympic dreams are realized. Darla Garcia from Ventura, California tells us all about it in Dreaming on Skates. I love to go to the park in winter with my dad and watch all the ice skaters skate. Oh, I wish someday I could skate just like that. One day, my dad came home with a present for me. What is it, Dad? It's a surprise you'll never forget. <gasps> They're the most beautiful ice skates I've ever seen. Thanks, Dad. Now I can ice skate. Every day, my dad would take me to the park to skate, and I got good at it. Do a triple axel. OK. No, a quadruple axel. OK. Oh, that's great, honey. Pardon me. Your daughter is fantastic on skates. Would you mind if I coached her and took her to the Olympics? I don't know. You'll have to ask her herself. Pumpkin, come here. Shh. This man would like to know if you want to go to the Olympics. Would you like that? Oh, boy! Would I? 
Finally, the day arrived, and I skated in front of hundreds of people. I did great. The gold medal and roses. It was the best day of my entire life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wake up, honey. It's time for school. Oh, no. It was just a dream. I have a surprise for you. <gasps> Dreaming on skates. The end. Extra! Extra! Believe it or not, boy befriends vegetables! Sixth grader Michael Clayton of Corvallis, Oregon relates his unusual story in Dangerous Surfing Veggies. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Colin who had two unusual best friends, Macho Mushroom and Cool Carrot, the ultimate surfing veggies. Hey, you guys, surf's up! How's it going? Beautiful, man, just beautiful. Oh, not a fungus among us. <laughs> hey, dude, let's party before it's time to go in the fridge for some night-night. Oh, totally. Let's go back to my house. All right, good. Yeah. Colin and his friends would limbo, listen to music, and watch scary cooking shows. And now that you've got your oil good and hot, and it must be very hot. Yes, like this, you see? Well, now we're ready to put our cut-up vegetables in. Yes, so here we go, and sizzle, and burn, baby, burn. Mm -hmm, good. Enough of that TV terror. Let's go surfing. Ah, yeah, come on. So, the veggies and Colin went to the beach to surf. Uh, check out how straight my stem is. No swaying gives you moves here, dude. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to surf upside down with my eyes closed because I'm a cool carrot. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but suddenly, a giant shark came up and was about to attack Colin. But Macho Mushroom jumped in front of him to save Colin and got bit. Oh, oh, help, dudes. I'm about to be turned into a mushroomy room. Oh, pain. Gross. A mushroom eating shark. What's this world coming to? The shark spit Macho Mushroom out. That tastes disgusting. <laughs> Dude, I saw everything. You saved my life, man. Are you all right? Well, my cap is a little dented, but I'm hanging tall. Oh, good thing vegetables don't taste good to sharks. Yeah. Hey, let's get something to eat. All this shark attacking has made me hungry. Yeah, I could really go for some veggies and dip. <gasps> oh, I mean chips and dip. Oh. You know, you guys are the best buds a dude could have. Yeah, good thing we're dangerous surfing veggies.
Welcome back to Ride Away, a show written by students just like yourselves from all over the country. With tools as simple as a pencil or as fancy as a computer, you can let your imaginations flow onto the paper to create funny, sad, exciting, or even scary stories. You can paint pictures with your words so that people will be able to visualize just what you're imagining. A good example of this is our first story today. She's a student at Conti School in New Jersey, and her story is called Tracks in the Snow. After it snows, it's fun to walk through the woods and guess who or what made all those tracks. Come on, let's take a look. This was a mouse who played by himself dancing left and right under the winter moon. And over here, look at this track. And this track must have been a pheasant walking to meet a friend. Look, this one's easy. This is a rabbit running very fast, the way all rabbits do. And I definitely know what this track is. A squirrel who was happy finding a nut. And this uncommon track is probably me. Tracks in the snow. The end. Get out of my way, you crocodiles. I'm coming through. Get out. Oh, <laughs> hello. I was just imagining I was going down the Amazon in a canoe. I love adventure stories. What's great about writing adventure stories is you can stay in the safety of your own room while experiencing all the thrills and dangers that come pouring out of your pencil. Our next authors share their exciting exploits with us as their main character goes through some unusual adventures for the surprise ending. Our authors come from Appalachie School in Tallahassee, Florida. Come with me as we see what Amy Lewis and Nicole Potts have dreamed up for us in The Magic Ring. Once there was a girl named Marie who wanted to be an explorer. Hey, you guys, I just saw a shooting star. Wow. wow. Yes, yeah, someday when I grow up, I'm going to be an explorer, and I'm going to visit all those countries, like the ones on those maps. Girls can't be explorers. Yes, they can. Oh, yes, they can. Can. You'll see. Yeah, you'll see. See. One day, Marie went into the forest pretending to be an explorer. Follow me, men and women, as we go on our journey, climbing over the mountains, through the river. Watch out! There's a crocodile! Stand back! I'll get it! Come here, you! Boom! You had enough? Get out of here! And now, to find the lost treasure of Atlantis. Hey, what's that? Suddenly, Marie saw something shiny on the ground. It was a beautiful ring. Ooh, I did find a treasure. This ring is beautiful. I'm sure no one would mind if I just tried it on. Marie slipped the ring on her finger. It was a perfect fit. But suddenly, Marie began to feel strange. Ooh. What's happening? I feel odd! Marie suddenly turned into a bunny. And then an alligator. And then a ferocious dog. And finally, a monkey. Oh, 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 oh no! The ring, it flew off! It's lost! I guess I'll have to stay this way forever! Oh, 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 oh. Here's another banana, Marie. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry. You'd look good that way. Yeah, real good. Good. Thanks, you guys. I, I'm not going to let this little setback get me down. You know, someday I am going to be an explorer because I want to know what's out there. And so Marie, who wanted to be an explorer, got the adventure of her life. The end.
June, moon, spoon, tune. I like to rhyme, so of course I like poetry. And one kind of poetry that I really like is called a limerick. A limerick is a very specific type of poem that's named after the Irish county of Limerick in Ireland. In a limerick, there are only five lines, and it's usually very funny. Ashley Duggar, a student at Martin Luther King School in San Diego, California, brings to us a wonderful limerick that she's entitled, A Young Lady Named Harris. There was a young lady named Harris whom nothing could ever embarrass. You know, I just hate blind dates, don't you? <laughs> okay, let's dig in. I love it. Oh, this is very good. I love it. You know, one time, I think part of my food. Good, good, good night. Hiya. <laughs> That's good. Good night. Well, I need a nice hot bath after a date like that. Ooh. Till that one fateful day, the bath salts she mislaid. And now she's in plaster of Paris. Here's some good advice for you authors who might be having a hard time getting your story started. Why not try what two of our authors have done? They each started with someone they already knew really well and through their writing helped share their special relationship. Their names are Jeremy Begay and Julius Martinez. They both attend Ojo Amarillo School in Fruitland, New Mexico. Jeremy shares with us my funny friend Xavier and Julius tells us about my special cousin. And so that's how you build a grandfather clock. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Yes, very good. Now for our next assignment, I want you to get out your pencils and your papers, and we're going to write about someone or something that's very special to us. For example, my little parakeet, Sweetie Pie, is very special to me. All right, everybody, begin. I'll write about my mother. I'll write about my dog. I wonder what's for lunch. I think I'll go bungee jumping this weekend. I know. I'll write about my favorite cousin. When I was three, I met him at the fair. <laughs> I heard his happy laugh. Then I saw him at the mall, and I felt as happy as a cat. Then we went swimming. And then we had a party. My special cousin. The end. I'm almost done. When's lunch? I think I learned to surf. I know. I write about my funny friend Xavier. <laughs> when I was four, I met Xavier at school. <laughs> I liked his laugh. We went to the mall, and I felt as happy as a cat. And then we went to the movies. I really like my funny friend Xavier. The end. <laughs> All right, everybody. Time's up. Turn in your papers and have fun and go to lunch. Yes, here we go. Very good. Oh, oh my. Let's see, what did they have here? Yes, oh, my special cousin. Oh, that sounds good. And 
my funny friend, Xavier. Oh, they sound wonderful. Oh, I just can't wait to read them. <laughs> One thing that I like about writing is that I am totally in charge. I can write about any character and put him in any situation. I could even give my main character something he thought was really great, but turned out to be a nightmare. Our next author uses this concept to create a unique tale. Matt's story is called The Castle. One day I was just reading when the mail came as usual. Mail? Thanks. <laughs> Junk mail, junk mail, junk mail. Whoa, but that's when I saw it. Some crazy bank gave me a credit card. <laughs> Duh. I think I'll go shop till I drop. <laughs> But then, I got the bill. Mail. And I fainted. <sighs> oh, what is this? Where am I? Stone walls? A drawbridge? This must be a castle. What does that sign say? Castle of War? Oh no! I must have traveled back in time and now I'm at a medieval castle. I'm gonna walk around and check things out. I've gotta find a way back home. Whoa! That guard keeps staring at me. Oh no! Intruder! Intruder! Capture the intruder! No time to think! Gotta run! Excuse me? Oh. Uh, uh, where am I? You're in the kitchen of the castle of war. I'm the cook who cooks in the kitchen of the castle of war. Uh, what do you cook? Well, here in the kitchen of the castle of war, we cook cabbage, meat, vegetables, potatoes, and intruders. Oh, you mean like me? Intruder! Oh, thanks a lot! Uh. Oh, I'll be safe in here. Oh, it's a dungeon. No time to panic. No time to panic. Panic! Panic! <laughs> Quiet, intruder. Eat this cabbage from the cook of the kitchen of the castle of war, for tomorrow will be your last. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't eat the cabbage from the cook of the kitchen of the castle of war. Why not, dude? You'll find out. Ugh, bony. <laughs> well, who are you? I'm the cousin of the cook of the kitchen of the castle of war. Cousin, cook, castle war, whatever, dude. I'm hungry. So I began to eat my food in a panic manner. <laughs> uh, 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 oh, I'm choking. I'm choking. He's 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 choking. Wow. I'm back home. And I'm not choking. <laughs> well, what a terrible dream. I've learned my lesson well. I will never use a credit card again if I don't have the money to pay for it. <laughs> Never give kids credit cards. Mail! <sighs> Thanks. Junk mail. Junk mail. Credit card. Credit card! <sighs> One form of writing is a chronicle, which is a record of events. This helps the reader to see how something was accomplished. Our next writer utilizes this form of writing to show how teamwork can achieve anything. 
Sarah Tavares attends Helen Ball School in El Paso, Texas. She shares with us a picture of what it's like at her school, where they all work together in our school community. Our school community works as a team. Yeah! Every day we do reading and spelling with students leading students. And then the ball went into the hole. Very good! Our students get along with each other and encourage each other to do their best. Yeah, come on, you can do it. You can do it. All right. Thanks, I did it. We clean up our classroom and share school supplies. The teachers in our school work as a team, too. They plan, support, and give each other ideas. You know what? I'm going to take my kids to the zoo. I think I'll take my class with yours, and I'll drive the bus, and I'll make all the lunches. And I'll make the name tags. Oh, oh let me grade those papers for you. Let's grade them together. <laughs> so now you see how everyone at school should work as a team. And that's our school community at Helen Ball Elementary. Bye! Oh, hi. I was just reading some Aesop fables. I love stories that have morals in them because they teach you lessons that you can use for your life. Now, it's not easy to write a story that is both entertaining and inspiring, but Mariata Messo has managed to do just that. Mariata goes to Mohawk Elementary School in Texas, and he has written an amusing story that has an important message for us. It is called Best Friends. Once upon a time, there were two boys, Ben and Johnny, who loved music and loved to sing. Hey, hey, Johnny. Yeah? Listen to the song I wrote for the big new singing competition. Okay. My heart is broken, now you're gone. How can I go on? Thump, thump, thump. Ooh. <laughs> Manly, yes, but I liked it, too. Yeah. Hey, listen to mine. There's a toad in the road Carrying a heavy load Don't worry, little toad Watch out for that truck Whoa, too bad, little toad Well, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but I think we should write an upbeat song for the competition. Yeah, you're right. Let's begin. Now, the one problem the two boys had was Rob, the bully. He was jealous of Johnny and Ben. Listen to those two. They think that they're so good just because they can sing. But they can't sing. They didn't ask me to sing with them. And I'm gonna tell them. Hey, you guys can't sing because you stink. No, we don't. Do we? No. No, we don't. Hey, and don't bother us, man. We're working on the big uh, singing competition. First prize is a record contract. Yeah, that's right. You're just jealous you can't sing. Go away, we need to practice. Yeah, you are disturbing our creative flow. Fine, I'll go. Sorry. I'm gonna ruin their chances of winning. Just you wait. Rob the bully put his plan into action. First, he threw water at them. Hey, is it starting to rain? I don't know. You better go inside. We don't want to catch cold. Yeah. Yeah. I must succeed. I've got it. <laughs> Rob rubbed soap on the floor to make it slippery. They'll walk on this floor, slip, and be out of the contest. <laughs> oh, my arm, my back. I got it. <laughs> Rob snuck into the house and took Ben and Johnny's guitars. 
Without their instruments, they won't be able to play. And they'll have to forfeit the contest. <laughs> oh, oh, bad dream. Whoa, what? Whoa, who stole my guitar? And mine! Wrong! Finally, the big day had come. The contest was in progress. I'm flying high in the sky and so goodbye. Thank you, that's great. <laughs> and for our last contestants, we have the singing team of Ben and Johnny. You guys will never win. You don't have any instruments. <laughs> we don't need instruments because we have the music in our minds. Yeah. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. We hear, we hear the, the music, music in our ears. We, we hear the music through our tears. We hear, we hear the, the music, music in our toes, but where it comes from, no one knows. We hear the music in our ears. We hear the music through our tears. We hear the music in our toes, but where it comes from, no one knows. That was amazing. <laughs> uh oh, and the winners are Ben and Johnny. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. You guys were awesome. I guess I did all that stuff to you because I was jealous. Sorry for what I did. It's okay. Hey, you want to be our road manager? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And you can be our backup singer. And you too, judge lady person. <laughs> we hear the music in our ears. We, we hear the music through our tears. And so Ben and Johnny became famous singers and had fun singing all over America. The end. We hear the music in our ears. We hear the music in our tears. We did. We hear the music in our toes. But where it comes from, no one knows. We hear the music in our ears. We hear the music through our tears. We hear the music in our toes, but where it comes from, no one knows. Yeah! Yeah! We hope you've enjoyed our show today. Your stories are finished and all put away. But we'll come again another day. The stories you've seen through Music and Mime can be written by you if you just take the time. So pick up a pencil and paper. You'll see. The, the adventures, adventures and magic that writing sets free. So, right away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our show, call The Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 and we'll send you some information. Now every day I write another story poem or adventure tale. When I'm using my imagination, I know I will never fail. It's fun making up a superhero. Super Chipmunk saves the day. Here's a mystery to keep you guessing. I just love to write away. Let's have some fun. Now we've begun. Just keep on writing cause it's so exciting right away.
Hi, it's time for another Right Away. The stories you are about to see on this program were written by students just like yourselves from all over the country. It's always fun for us to see what your imaginations have created for us to perform. And today is no exception. We found some wonderful stories that are exciting, funny, and even take us as far as the center of the earth. So let's see what you have written for us today. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to travel back in time, to the time of kings and queens and knights? Well, you can't really travel back in time, but you can go anywhere you want, any time you want, simply by putting yourself in your very own story. And that's just what our next author did. Tori Newman from Erickson School in Mesa, Arizona, put herself into her own narrative entitled, The McMillian Mix-Up. The story I'm about to tell you may sound a little bit strange, but it really happened to me. It all began one dark night. I was reading when I fell asleep. I awoke to a loud crash. A huge vase had fallen and broken into a million pieces. How did that happen? And how did it get in my room? Where am I? Where's the sign on my door that reads, Tori's room, keep out? How did I get here? Suddenly, a big fluffy dog ran into the room and jumped on me. Then, a strange looking man in odd clothes came in and said, James, James, get down. Oh, I am so sorry, Mistress Victoria. It's just that it got out of my grip. Why, you look so pale, like a ghost. Who are you and where am I? Oh dear, you must be sick now to remember who I am. I've lived at the McMillian Castle ever since you were a little girl. I, I'm Rolf, your servant, basically the one who has taken care of you your whole life. And where did you say I was and what's the date? Oh dear, 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 you are in your mother and father's castle and it is April 13th, 1126. <laughs> When I woke up, everyone was standing over me with a woman saying, oh, My baby, my baby, are you all right? Who are you? Oh, I'm your mother, your mother, your mother. I'm out of here! I ran and ran until I reached a dead end. For air. They were running down the hall after me. They were getting closer and closer when I felt a rush of air and... Tori, this is the last time I call you to dinner before I give it to the dog. I'm in my own room. In my own bed. <laughs> and to this day, I still can't figure out what happened. All I know is no more peanut butter and pickle sandwiches before bedtime. And they lived happily ever after. A typical ending for a fairy tale, right? Well, I have a new fairy tale. It has many elements of a fairy tale like magic and dragons, but with a modern story's unusual twist. It was written by Erica Lynn Basaraba of Henry School in Tucson, Arizona. Her new tale is called A Dragon. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there lived a baby dragon named Mikey. He was a nice, helpful dragon. One day, he met a strange lady who needed his help. Hello, little dragon. Who are you? I am the Lady of Magic. I make things appear and disappear. I can do all sorts of magical things. Oh, <laughs> I don't believe that you have magic. Prove it to me. So that the little dragon would believe, the magical lady waved her hands across the sky and lightning flashed and beautiful mountains came to be. Now do you believe? I believe you! Good, for I need your help. Oh, I've lost all my gold. A mean little troll threw it into the ocean and I cannot touch salt water. If you get it for me, I will grant you one wish. But I'm a dragon. 
I can't swim. I can only fly. Hmm. I've got it. Close your eyes. And with a wave of her hand, the magical lady turned Mikey the dragon into a mermaid. Now to find the gold. The mermaid swam deep down and found the gold. Then she swam back up and gave the gold to the lady. I love being a mermaid. My wish is to stay this way forever. I shall be called Michelle. And I will give you a new friend. Merman, come and meet your new friend. Hi, I'm Matt the Merman. Let's swim. They both lived happily ever after. But as for the magical lady, she took her gold to Las Vegas and lost it all in the slot machines. Jackpot, jackpot, jackpot. Lemon? Oh, I've lost all my gold. Well, that's the way it goes in Vegas, baby. <gasps> okay. Oh, baby, Las Vegas. We've had a lot of stories about people whom the authors know. Our next writer lets us know about a special person in her life, but she does so in a different way. She uses my favorite form of writing, poetry. Candace Taylor from Conti School in New Jersey lets us see how important a friend is in her poem, Friendship. I have a friend who likes to talk. And I told him, if you think I'm wearing that to the dance, you're crazy. After all, I have a reputation to uphold. But she never likes to walk. Where to, ladies? The mall, of course. Did I ever tell you about the time that I... She likes to shop a lot with me. Oh, look at that. Oh, and that. Oh, and that. Together, we're good company. And like I was saying, friendship. The end. Oh. <laughs> it's lots of fun to write a story, it is. But it's a lot more fun to write it with someone else. That is called a collaboration. Oh, that's a big word, it is. Oh. Our next authors had a great time in their collaboration when they wrote the lyrics to a song. Their names are Robin Peckham, Saveya Sangamta, Hope Kramnik, and Travis LaJoy. They attend Beachland Elementary in Vero Beach, Florida, and their song is called Pirates from Cinnabar. There were many, many pirates from Cinnabar. They once sailed into a magic jar. The jar took them to a far-off land. There was some buried treasure in the sand. Searching for treasures, what pirates do Searching for treasures, what pirates do The pirates were sure to look for more On this strange island from shore to shore they found the buried treasure and they set sail They almost got swallowed by a giant whale The whale spit them out to a far off land They found more buried treasure in the whole sand Searching for treasures, what pirates do Searching for treasures, what pirates do 
The pirates were sure to look for more. On the strange island from shore to shore. There were many, many pirates from Cinnabar. Oh, hi. <laughs> you know, I really enjoy reading stories about people who dare to explore the unknown. How exciting and challenging it must have been to be able to find out what's on the other side of that mountain. Or what's on the other side of that ocean? Well, today, the world's been explored, mapped out, and for the most part, photographed. So now, we must find some place new to explore. Trinette Brunson from Alameda Elementary in Las Cruces, New Mexico, has written a wonderful adventure story that takes us to some place new. In her story entitled, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Today, I'm going on a journey a journey to the center of the earth. Yes, in my green, mean machine with a drill at the end of it for drilling down to the center of the earth. I'm fully prepared. I have hamburgers, pizza, fruit. What I like to do first is eat. Mm -mm -mm. And then <coughs> I like to drink some of this orange stuff. <laughs> and then I put on my flame-proof suit. And then I'm ready to go. So, we're pulling for you. I am now ready to go into the center of the earth. I am going through the crust of the earth. I'm going through the mantle now. What's it like down there? Sort of like a seven-layer dip. Every layer a different color and texture. I'm now going through the outer core. Now I'm in the inner core. It's hot down here. Very, very hot. I sure hope she doesn't sweat in that fireproof suit I lent her. How can you think about that at a time like this? I'm sweating like a pig. I've done it. I've gone down to the center of the earth. But wait, Houston, I think we have a problem. Just kidding. <laughs> it is time now to go back up. Here I go. Up through the inner core. Now the outer core. Now, yes, I'm going through the mantle. And now, I've done it. Through the crust of the earth. I'm home! We did it. We journeyed to the center of the earth. It's always interesting to me to see how two authors can take the same topic and come up with their own unique way of sharing. Our next two authors were asked to write about their favorite pets, and they each came up with a way to make their story original. Sean Suumtua wrote about My Husky Dog, and Ami Benitez wrote about My Good Cat. They both go to Ojo Amarillo School in Fruitland, New Mexico. So why are you here at the vet? My cat is sick. I first met him at my house. But he was sick, so we came to the vets here in town. I feel like going to sleep, it takes so long. I hope my cat gets well. My good cat. Yeah, my husky dog is really nice. I met him when I was at my house. His eyes are cool. We would go hunting down at Newcomb. But I wish he didn't run off. I'm hoping someone has found him. Your cat's all better. <laughs> and guess what? Someone found your husky dog. Now we can go hunting as the clouds go by. My husky dog. Woo! My good cat. <laughs> One 
way to write an exciting story is to get your main character into some kind of trouble and then figure out a way to get him out. Our next story has great characters, lots of action, and a big mess that our hero gets himself into, and our author has created a clever way to get him out. It was written by Michael Singletree, who attends Helen Ball School in El Paso, Texas. Michael's story is called The Lost Boy. Once there was a little boy named Billy who liked to play outside, but Billy was a curious little boy. What are what's out in the forest? I'm gonna go take a look. <laughs> Billy forgot to tell his mom where he was going. On the way, he saw his nosy neighbor. Oh. Hi, Billy. Hi. Where are you going? To the forest. Oh. Well, then I just want to tell you one thing. Be careful. OK. Yes. And, and whatever you do, don't talk to strangers. Just two things. Be careful and don't talk to strangers. OK. Yes. And just one more thing. Three things. Whatever you do, uh -huh. Don't go alone. Okay. That's it. Be careful. Don't talk to strangers and don't go alone. Whatever. But Billy was gone. He had gone into the forest alone. Boy, it sure is dark and spooky out here. Oh, there's an old shack with some lights on. Maybe someone's inside. Two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five. Oh, that bank robbery was a snap. And this shack in the woods is the perfect hideout. They'll never find me. <laughs> What's that? Sneaking around, are ya? Oh, you're just a curious fella, aren't ya? Did you know that I'm a bank robber? No. Yes, you did. I just told you. You're all too curious, kid. Now you forced me to lock you into a dark room. No, 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 don't, please, no. Get over here. Meanwhile, at home, Billy's mom was very worried. Billy? Billy, where are you? Oh, are you looking for Billy? Why, yes. Oh, well, he went into the woods alone. But he didn't ask for permission. Kids, I hope he's all right. Uh, I want my mommy. Hey, hey, kid, quiet. You just interrupted my meal of wieners and beans and brown bread. Hey, don't try to escape by untying that bad knot I made or sneaking out of here while I'm sleeping and it's such a sound sleep nothing can get me out of and try to escape, all right? I won't. Good. I escaped. I escaped, and now I'm gonna go home for some help. Billy ran and ran until he got to his neighbor's house. Quick, quick, a robber was counting his money in the woods, and I saw him, and he caught me and tied me up, but I escaped, and now he's after me. Quick, run to my house. A robber? Quick, Mom, call 911. I saw a robber counting his money, but he caught me, tied me up, I escaped, and now he's running after me. I'll call right away. <laughs> Thought you'd sneak off, eh? Well, I found you. <laughs> what? But you're gonna say there's a policewoman behind me ready to arrest me? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, you're under arrest. Come with me. I was so worried about you. I hope you've learned your lesson. Never go anywhere without asking for permission first. I promise, Mom. What a day. What a day! And Billy, his mom, and his neighbor lived happily ever after. The end. We hope you've enjoyed our show today. Your stories are finished and all put away. But we'll come again another day. The stories you've seen through Music and Mind can be written by you if you just take the time. So pick up a pencil and paper. You'll see. The, the adventures, adventures and magic that writing sets free. So, right away. This has been Right Away. If you'd like to see your students' writings come to life on our show, call The Imagination Machine at 714-771-2499 and we'll send you some information. Now every day I write another story 
poem or adventure tale when i'm using my imagination i know i will never fail it's fun making up a superhero super chipmunk saves the day here's a mystery to keep you guessing i just love to write away let's have some fun now we've begun just keep on writing cause it's so exciting